Hi, Janet. Can you hear me? Looks like you may be a little frozen. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, that is not a good sign. Let's hope you get unfrozen here in a minute. Oh, so I think she's going to leave and come back in. So we're actually a minute early this morning because I wanted to make sure that we weren't going to have any issues getting on. So I'm happy it clicked on first time. And, you know, one of the things is you, uh, those of you who do any stuff, you know, like these live broadcasts and things, one of the things you'll realize, and I'm sure you have if you've done it very much, is there's always going to be technical difficulties. I mean, I think that's just the nature of the beast. And yes, we get frustrated by it, but you just have to go with the flow. You just go with it. And, you know, the last several weeks I've been having some issues. So, you know, finally got down to, I had to go the next level and, and contact them. And anyway, so they reset my whole page and it looks like we're doing good. So um, just don't give up too early, I guess, is my point with that. If you're having some technical issues sometime on a show, you handle it the best you can while you're in the middle of your show. And you know that we have switched. Uh, I think the last three weeks we've had to do a little switch and go back over to Zoom, which Zoom is a great platform. So. Since I'm waiting for Janet to get back on, and um, I actually started a minute early, uh, just kind of fill in some stuff. So there's a variety of platforms out there. This is a little FYI, little platforms out there that you can use. And I've tried not, numerous of them, three or four different ones. And there are advantages in each one. This is what I find out. There's not one that does everything that I found. Uh, but this is Be Live, and um, overall, it's been my best choice, except for the last couple of weeks. But then we did get it resolved, so it was just one of those issues they had to do a reset, kind of like your phone. It, when you've tried everything else, turn it off and turn it back on, and most of the time, that fixes the problem, right? So I want to know who is out there. Who's out there with me this morning? You say a quick hello, and there's a link. On the notice, what I realized uh, when I went and looked at the notice that VLive sends out, there's a little uh, link that they have that you can just click that link and it gives face tells Facebook that you give your permission for them to show your name. Ah, there, Dr. Denise. Good morning. Hey, how are you? Yeah, Janet was on with me just a couple minutes ago, was having a little technical issues and uh, with her internet, so I, she'll be back shortly. Uh, but nice to have you here this morning. So listen to your uh, partner. So, and Grace, hi, good morning. Nice to see you. Is it as freezing in Kansas City as it appears to be? Um, it looks like you're going to be down in the 30s, uh, mid 30s this whole week, right? And uh, let's see, Janet's trying to get back on. Um, let me get, let me send her just a quick little message here, everybody. Um, To make soda, try to reconnect. Okay, I'm telling you, it's working fine here. So try to just get, uh, just to jump back on the quicker link. There we go. Let's see if she can get back, back on with us. Yeah, we've been on for like the last 15 minutes, having a nice little chat. And then all of a sudden, something came about and kicked her off. Uh, yes, thank you, Kathy. Fingers crossed for cyber connections. I mean, <laughs> and Paulette Young from Michigan. Well, hi, Paulette. So nice to uh, meet you. It looks like Dan is trying to get on. And Terry Ann, hey there, girl. Uh, yeah, I've been hearing it's pretty cold there. <laughs> Decided. I'm glad I'm not there early, right? <laughs> uh, Greg says, yeah, it's called November. Yeah, you kind of have to expect that November, December, January, February, and maybe March are going to be pretty, pretty cold for Kansas City and that whole area. And there she is. Yay. Okay. You are. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on here, but we're yeah. back. That's okay. We were just talking about that. It's like, you know, those technical issues just happen. I mean, we just have no control. Part of, part of these times we're living in too, I think. <laughs> Yeah, well, I won't go down that road, but I wondered about that this morning. I got up and the TVs didn't work, and I'm thinking, oh, well, okay. <laughs> but, uh, we won't chase that rabbit right now. We can chase that on our own later, right? 
Amen. So everybody, this is Dr. Janet Franco, and she has an amazing story. Um, her life has had so many, uh, let me see. Yeah, I mean, you call it kind of the roller coaster. She has had ups and downs and turnarounds, and uh, she has a story really, and if I understand it right, because I haven't had the chance to read your book yet. It's coming out, but it's not out there yet. Um, but listening to you, we've had several conversations. Um, it uh, seems to me that your story is really about God's faithfulness and how he has just brought you through all these things. Am I interpreting that correctly? Absolutely, Delinda. It started as actually when I was a young girl, uh, people might have heard the Flying Francos. That was my brothers and I. And so when I was a young girl, um, the age of five or six years old, I started having these visions. And um, I was told very young that my life would be used for God at a very young age. It was amazing. Wow. Did that scare you? Is a little, a little bit. I started telling people about these visions I was having and they made fun of me because I'm only six. Right. So they thought I was delusional. So I stopped talking about it until I had my next huge visitation at the age of 15. And at that time, I was at the top of my world as an acrobat. People have heard of us. I mean, we've been all over, but I, um, I didn't have a normal childhood. I had a stage mom. I traveled. I was in Nassau, Bahamas at the age of 14. I was in Canada at 15, um, graduated early from school. And then I got hurt really bad at 18, ended my career. I was in a body brace for a year. So that turned my life uh, around. And then I decided to get married to a guy that I met when I was 13. And oh, wow. um, yeah, so we got married and had four boys by the time I was 26. And Whoa. then my second son sean fell out a window when he was three and suffered brain injury terribly like cracked his skull from top to bottom and um that again changed my life to the direction i'm in now and people say why do you hold on to all this because i've been through a lot working with veterans and the dangers that i faced but when you see your child um go through this devastating years four suicide attempts and on and on um that I became a single mom because it destroyed our relationship. So I was a single mom of four in 1989. So I moved back to Las Vegas from, from Arizona so my parents could help me. And my youngest son was born with a critical asthma and eczema disorder. And I had to carry him on a pillow for almost eight months. Um, so, and then I had a heart attack at 29. I was given a year to live. So I just kept my faith, um, if it wasn't for all of that, Delinda, I could not do what I do. And especially dealing with suicidal veterans for 16 years, um, I've seen it all. I've been threatened. I've been strangled. I've been, you know, all of it. And God promised me that he would take care of me through all this because I saw these visions at six. And I saw a world. It was crazy. And one of these visions I had was a pie. It was this pie. And half of it was gone. It was like shadowed. It just disappeared. And I was told this would happen in my lifetime, this experience. And look at look what we're living right now. And then I was told that I would be experiencing peace in my lifetime on planet Earth. And I was six. So people used to think I was crazy until things started happening that I had been saying my whole life. And then I had a lot of, that's what my book's about, um, the experiences in the hospital when I really didn't have anybody because the father was not really supportive. And I don't want to make him wrong because I'm not about that. I say, to, I say to people, he became my greatest teacher by the hardship he gave me, he offered me. And so I, I felt like I was a, in a canoe in the middle of the ocean with four kids and two critical. And I had to figure out a way to get to land and feed them with no child support or anything. So that was my journey in the eighties and nineties. So that's that's kind of the backbone of what gave me the inspiration to pay it forward. That's it in a nutshell, actually. Now today they're they're doing amazing. Um, they have some trauma from the the abuse from the from their father, and I must say that that's just honest. Um, but we're all evolving, and we all have a childhood, and we all have problems that we faced, and so they're they're wiser but a couple of them are really having problems emotionally especially in the time we're living in these young people don't know where we're going right <laughs> and so i think that we all 
this amazing agreement with our with our with our creator with god to walk what we're here to do and i feel like i'm doing that especially now with thousands of people that have been inspired through radio for 28 years you know it's been a journey <laughs> for sure yeah so, man you do have a journey it's like oh my gosh just you could take either in any one of those stories and it would be a lot but you know you put them together so i'm gonna i'm gonna backpedal just a little bit just so that we can um understand so right now you are um you work you're working with veterans and you have been for the last what did you say 19 16, years or something? 16, 16 years yeah 16 years and you uh, just tell us a little bit about that about what like what today it is that you're doing yes and well I, 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 pods yeah. but. I know i i have to seg segment because it it's so much that you have to make sure people can follow the journey but in 2005 i was doing a radio show in victorville california and i was selling a arterial product that cleaned plaque out of the body and we were doing extraordinary but i was a single mom working about 80 hours a week four baseball players, one that won the World Series, my brain injured baby, won the JC College World Series, which was amazing. Oh, wow. And so when I got off the air, this lady was sitting there and her name was Joy of all names, right? Joy. And she said to me, can I take you to lunch? She asked me. I said, sure. I had no idea who this woman was. And so I'll never forget that. She took me to Tony Roma's in Victorville. Oh, yes. I love that. You know where that is? <laughs> I do. And when we sat down um, to talk, she starts crying. And um, I was, wow, okay. And so she started telling me about the statistics of veterans, the suicide rate and PTSD, which I didn't even know what that was, TBI, traumatic brain injury, diabetes, incarcerated veterans. I was in overwhelm. And I said, excuse me, Joy, what do you want me to do? And this is what she said blatantly. She said, I know I've been listening to you every time you come to Victorville when you're on the air for three years and God keeps telling me you're the one that's going to help our veterans. And I'm to come and ask you to do this. That's how it started in 2005. Wow. And so I told her, I said, listen, I'm a single mom with four kids working 80 hours a week. And now you want me to help the veterans? And I'm not. My father was in the military, but he wasn't only because he had to. Right. I had no idea what I was in for. And I told her, I pray about everything. Let me go back to my room and pray. And that's when I had this amazing vision. I was woke up in the middle of the night and I heard the narrator, like I can hear you, told me that I was going to be, um, he showed me the rose and he said, the rose is the love of God. And when you hand the rose, you've handed me. And he explained to me that the rose, the petals of the rose, the generations of time, the red rose represents the passion and the bloodshed for freedom. And the stem has the thorns on it. That is the military that protects the rose. And when you water the rose, which is love, the rose grows. And that's was his description of what love was. And that's how soulful Rosie was born. And I saw this vision of the United States and it was all these roses that were like blanketed across the United States. And I was told verbatim what to do. And I was also told that I'd be in very dangerous situations and that I would be protected. And then my son, my youngest son, Brian, is a musical prodigy. He's never, never had a lesson in music and he plays every instrument with no lesson. And I was told that he would write the song that's gonna be the ballad that one day I'll use to bring the country back together again. And that's called, You'll Always Be Remembered. And so that song, I had asked Brian the next day, would you do me a favor? Oh, there's a big piece to this. The, the, the voice told me, do not tell Brian that I sent you to do this. You just asked him to write the song. And one day he'll say to you, mom, I can't get the song out of my head. I can't get the song out of my head. And long and behold, the next day I called him, he had the song written in two hours, a six minute ballad he did in two hours. Oh, it wow. took me it took me about ten to thirteen thousand dollars to produce this song in 2005. And it's actually on YouTube, but we've gone through a lot of uh, problems trying to get this out because of governments and things that have stopped me, tried to stop me from helping our veterans. And it's been very, very dangerous. 
But he did say to me when we completed the song, he called me one day and he goes, Mom, I just can't get this song out of my head. I can't get exactly verbatim, he said to me. And I just started crying because I knew, I knew. And the spirit told me that he's a perfect channel. He's a clear channel to hear me. And he's a prodigy. He's a musical prodigy. And so that's when my journey started. But then I didn't know what to do. I'm like, how do I help veterans? What is so I started studying the brain. I started studying um, the VA. I started looking online and, and all of these different things. And then a couple of years later, I met a guy by the name of Al Gerard out of, out of Southern California that said that he had an open wound from Afghanistan, blown up his head. And he, he had hyperbaric oxygen therapy and it restored his brain. It took him six months. So he introduced me to the godfather of hyperbaric which is Dr. Paul Harch at New Orleans. And I ended up having a two hour conversation with Dr. Harch. And um, one thing led to another. And then I started meeting all of these experts and scientists that were moving the markers of science when it comes to the brain. Um, and I learned that after 40 sessions on hyperbaric is when the blood, the red blood cells get saturated and then it seeps over to the plasma and that's when the magic happens. That's when stem cell grows and the brain starts restoring itself. Telomeres grow. Um, now, many years later, we're seeing anoxic babies get their lives back. We're seeing IQ being increased six to eight points after 40 dives and on and on. So I followed these, these experts and I joined the Treat Now Coalition that was launched by um, former Secretary of the Army, Marty Hoffman. And he became a dear friend of mine and uh, he had cancer at 83. And he told me, I'm dying, but I know God has sent you to be the glue and the love for this movement. So I jumped in, you know, two feet, four feet, two feet, all of it in. And uh, it became, I traveled the country two times with my little doggy. And um, I've been dealing with suicidal veterans now for 16 years and never lost one. So that's oh, God. Wow. That's God. That is amazing. Wow. So yeah. is that, so part of that treatment, so you say, so you're dealing with suicidal veterans. I mean, just the statistics alone would end again. It's amazing that you would have no, you would not have lost one veteran in that amount of time. So, and you're, so you're doing oxygen treatment. So explain that a little bit. What, what is that that you're doing? What, what are they going through that's, rejuvenating their brain or whatever is that a, that's not a subject i've studied so i certainly don't know yeah well um if anybody that's listening or going to be watching uh are familiar with the the navy they use hyperbaric for the bends you know when i'm you're delayed right now i'm having technical issues are you there yeah you're kind of floating in and out but i'd say keep speaking and i think okay. your words will come out we'll catch up here yeah i don't know what's the matter with the signal but um uh, the navy they use hyperbaric in the navy for the bends so when they when the divers go deep the seals they have to have hyperbaric to um to regulate i'm trying to use words that people understand because the cells go through yeah. trauma that deep so the oxygen gives life to the cell and then it oxygenates the blood, the red blood, and then it gets into the white blood cells, which is what neutralizes the bends. Um, so I worked with that for about eight years. And I remember a time in Las Vegas, I got a phone call. Are you understanding me okay? Am I coming through okay? Yeah, I can hear you well. Okay. You, you're, you float a little bit, but I can hear you. Yeah, I don't know what's the matter. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm even in Vegas. I don't understand this, but... Um, okay, so I got a call about a medic, and he had cut his neck three times. And when they told me that he was put on 52 meds a day, oh. 52 by the VA, and he was all numb, he was gone. He was, when I met him, his eyeballs were everywhere. So at that time, this was about eight years ago. Um, we had philanthropists in the country that would donate some money so they could go to a hyperbaric center or somewhere in the country. And the only one that had openings was in Colorado. So we sent him there. We flew him in. 
And we lost him in the airport for an hour. We lost him because of his meds. And so when we finally found Christopher, we put him through 30, actually 80 dives. They totally paid for him to stay. Um, and this young man, this young soldier had his life back in, in but at the end of 30 days, he was coherent. Uh, the drugs were naturally coming out of his body due to the oxygen in his blood. Nothing will, oxygen will share no space with anything. Oxygen owns the space. So anything that wants to violate your body, oxygen will, it's the carrier. It's the, I call it the breath of life. You try to hold your mouth for a while and see what happens. You can go without food and water for a while, but you can't go without oxygen. Yeah. So it is the breath of life. And it gave Christopher his life back. That's when I saw the magic hands on. And then at that point, when people across the country heard the story, I was then, I had two phones. And when the second one rang, I had to get up and go because I had a suicidal veteran um, at the other end. So it was a traumatic years for me. Um, my own health collapsed about eight years ago, seven years ago. I took some time off about six months. I did have to hide sometimes because the government did not want this going on because of all the corruption that was going on within the VA. I found, I found VAs that had hyperbarics underground in the storages and they wouldn't bring it out. It was oh that. My no, I can, t you know, my book's coming out and I have to only say a couple things because I can't, can't say a whole lot, but I do know that this system behind me, it says Livo 2 behind me here. That system, hyperbaric is very expensive. The average, if, if you're talking about hard shells and soft shells, the hard shells run anywhere from forty to $60,000. Then you have to have them installed. And then it's about $150 per session. And then they have the soft shells now. But the problem with the soft shells is there's been this, this vote of which one works better. And through my studies, I have discovered that the soft shells work as good as the hard shells, but it's still expensive. So when I ran across Livo 2, Mark Squibb out of Colorado developed this system. And if you can see it, the bike behind me, I don't know if you can see it right here, there's a stationary bike here. And then this tent is set up to the oxygenators over here. The constant, the concentrators are here on the floor and they're all hooked up. And when you put that on your head, here's the mask, a regular oxygen mask you put on, and then you get on the bike for 15 minutes. And studies show that in eight minutes, because you're on the bike and you're forcing the oxygen into the red blood, it gets into the white blood cells in eight minutes versus 40 dives in hyperbaric wow. and this has been around two decades and um i think dr denise is on on the stream here i see her name there yeah yeah she is That's yeah she's been so great she's a resident physician for the triple crown of health and wellness but what we did is we put together uh three different categories within the triple crown because after 40 years doing this i realized that as a young mom I was so confused. I was just trying everything to save my kids. So I thought when you're sick, you don't know where to go. You go, most people go to drugs first or they have any knowledge of nutrition. They go to the health food stores, but then what do you do? Who do you talk to? Who do you? So I said, you know what? I'm going to make it easier for people. I'm going to, I'm going to have three categories. One is oxygen therapies and microcirculation, which is the base of all life, right? Then you need to feed the body. That was the missing piece in the in the hyperbaric community was they weren't using the power of, of foods and, and nutraceuticals and neurofeedback and those things to help the body survive. Now that you've healed the body or the brain, now you need to feed it and balance it and clean it. So that's where the second category is our emerald section. And that's the DNA repair and DNA customized nutrition, which you're talking like this is the movers. We've moved the markers of science like nobody's business. I mean, this is stuff that has taken our DNA repair has been studied 70 years out of Czechoslovakia. And it got its FDA clearance here about two years ago in the United States. It repairs the DNA. Have you heard of such a thing? It offers new. <laughs> it's 
And it's been studied for, it has about 13,000 clinical studies done on our DNA repair. And then our third category is quantum. Everything's going quantum now. Everything that we have, this, these glasses, this water, this, it's all frequencies. And so we realized that when you raise the frequency, which, which Delinda told me why God gave me the words to tell these veterans or this, these mil and their families, by the way, I used higher frequency conversations, which elevated their hope levels. It elevated their faith by just the, the law of the spoken word, right? That was before I even put them on anything. That's the power of how you show up in life. When you have a frequency that people like to be around, you become a living magnet, right? Some people lighten the room by leaving it, you know, <laughs> seriously. So it's, it's like true, right? So I think that the three categories work so well together and we're getting ready to put our triple crown centers in churches all over the United States. So the churches can treat their own, you know, and it doesn't cost very much because this unit here is only, it's less than $10,000 versus a hundred thousand with hyperbaric with installation. You can use this in your home. You could use it in a gym. You can use it in a spa. It's great for massage therapists, get them on the bike, then work on their bodies. And then you got all that oxygenation going on in their plasma. There's so many great things out there, but what Dr. Denise and I do is we make sure that we look at the science and we have our scientists look at things. So when we bring things to the forefront, we don't have returns. We don't have people returning products and things because they work. They're scientifically proven. And I think that's where we kind of put ourselves separate than most. That's kind of our overview. <laughs> a lot to wow. take in, right? <laughs> There's a lot, a lot to unpack there. So you're, so I'm going to backtrack a little bit and make sure that I'm, I'm following the flow. So this, yeah. um, this hyperbaric systems that you have, you're, there, are, there are centers where these are available for veterans or you have to try to get veterans to the places that have these or you're, tr you're trying to get more investors to provide these in locations for the veterans or all of the above? Yes. All of the above. We have quite a few centers across the country, but let me tell you, the problem here is these scientists, God bless their hearts. They, some of them have gone through marriages. They second their houses. They put it all in the line like I did um, to make sure the science is there. So now a lot of them are struggling financially, but they have all this science that's proven. We've restored 9,000 brains of our veterans across the US. We know it works. We have the science now. We're getting close to the VA looking at this as an option. Our whole Treat Now Coalition worked with President Trump to get the Mission Act bill passed. And that will offer a reimbursements and treatments for hyperbaric, LIVO2. So what I'm trying to do is get this protocol of Triple Crown accepted under the, the VA protocols like physical therapies or we do amazing things with drug abuse. I mean... We have a protocol here with Livo2 that Mark, the owner, has seen people rid all kinds of drugs, including the worst, in a two-week period, two weeks, without withdrawals, without withdrawals. And so I told you we're talking with one of the judges today at two o'clock about bringing this protocol into the courts so that these poor people, most of them have brain injury, by the way. Over 40% of our incarcerated veterans, that is 800,000 of them, have TBI. And they're sitting in jail when they serve this country. And we can treat them now, right? So that's what this whole mission is about, is to open up this ability to have these modalities. And because of LIVO2, it's affordable now. So yes, we're looking for investors. We're looking for people that want to bring the Triple Crown into their business. You could even have it, like, say you're in a hotel, you can have a little room. You know, they have the gyms and things in these hotels. Well, because of COVID and because of the immune system situation, we can have this protocol in these centers or in these hotels or churches. doesn't matter because it takes a 10 by 10 space. That's it. And you can have your own triple crown center. 
Pretty extraordinary. Wow. So yes, all of the above of what you said is what we're looking for. So 9,000, you have 9,000 documented cases of the healing of these veterans. That That's yes. significant. I mean, that is really amazing. Oh, it's, uh, it's historical for sure. But remember, we're helping autistic children. We're helping anoxic babies. We're helping diabetes. Oh, this is so good because it forces the oxygen into the circula circulatory system. And Dr. Denise knows that very well. In fact, one of the um, one of the protocols that is that is covered under insurance is diabetic foot wounds. But she'll tell you that they have to almost be to where their legs have to be amputated before they'll give them the okay, the insurance companies will give them the okay to use hyperbaric, which is the sad part. So we're, pro we're trying to take this to the masses right now. And as I told you before we started, um, Dr. Nisa and I are starting our own podcast on Thanksgiving Day. And if they go to sulfurosy.com, it's right there on the front of the site. And um, I'm in the process of recording and, oh, excuse me, raising the funds to create a documentary called Warrior Speak. And that's going to be four warriors, two veterans, one firefighter and one police that are all brain injured. And you'll be able to see their progression as their brains heal in the documentary, along with their families. They don't realize that secondary PTSD can sometimes be worse than primary because the families are just so there. It's let me put it this way. They say 22 a day times that by four or five. That's what we're seeing right now. That's how many suicides are happening in America right now. We're losing oh, our military. So the former secretary of the army said to me before he passed away, he said, Janet, if we continue on the suicide path because of so many young kids on drugs, we won't have a military in three to five years. That's why I dedicate my life to this because these are our front line, especially right now with all the military being used all over the world. Yeah. We need to step to the plate and help with what this coalition is doing. And it's so vital. And I saw my son's life transform. So it works. It just works. It just works. Wow. It's great news. And what is the coalition again? Because I, I can't quite understand. What's the name of it? It's called the Treat Now. Treat Now oh, Coalition. Treat, treat Now Coalition. And is that something that the, if, if we go out there and... Uh, try yeah, to if, you go to, if they go to treat, yeah, treatnow.org is, okay. is the website, treatnow.org. And that is know, a, um, that is so a network. Of oh, I did. Okay. You see, I think you just put that on there. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, treatnow.org. Okay. Uh, yeah, because you've touched on so many uh, different yeah, things, which has been wonderful. So by we can go and find more information about you and Dr. Denise and the, the Triple Crown on Soulful Rosie um, and then the Treat Now. And um, yeah. I just admire so much what you're doing, Jen, because you've had all this. And, and we didn't even we barely touched on your whole story of your life and what brought you to this. But I encourage everybody to be watching for the book as it comes out. Um, I can't wait to get it. And, just read, you know, because it's so inspiring. It's so um, heartwarming to see somebody's journey and then how God's brought them through and what you were going through, your baby falling out of a window to now you're helping veterans, saving, literally saving their lives, showing, giving them resources, showing them ways that they can save their lives yeah. of them and their families, you know, because so many yeah. families are broken apart because of that. And, and uh, the whole it's, it's epidemic, it, you know, that the, yes. whole, the suicide yes. and the, the PTSD and those things. Um, and so I just, and it's thank, not, and it's you not your just, service. You're, you're in the service. You may not be an official. Uh, I know. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I was honored uh, with woman of the year, 2018 in Nevada, and they made me an honorary soldier. Um, and I, and I really feel like I've been in the trenches, you know, I've been in the very dangerous yeah. foxhole, if you will. And um, I'm really, actually, I can honestly say I'm proud of myself for holding on because there's days I didn't think I was going to make it. Um, there was days I had to go hide, uh, many days. Um, and God would always say to me, we got you. You know, your angels have got you. And I could hear this audibly. 
And I was one time in California and I was in the middle of the night and I heard get up and go now, get up and go now. And um, the next day they were at the door looking for me. This is about six years ago. So I have been inner guided and anybody out there that has wavering faith right now because of what's going on, the only way out is in. Go inside. That's where all your answers are. That's where God, that's where God lives. Open that communication and faith is a muscle. So the more you exercise your faith, the more you can get through this situation we're in like Teflon, let it roll off, get away from the news, just feed yourself with positive reinforcements. Like every morning I get up with positive reinforcements. I listen to on YouTube. I go to bed at night with teaching so that my brain picks all that up. So I just want to put that out there because I've been a life coach for 20 years and just the fear could be your fuel. Let your fear be your fuel. And when you do that, you can do things that that's what the Olympiads do. That's what the, the seals do. They stretch life beyond anything you can imagine. And being around veterans, that taught me the power of one another. Doesn't matter the color of your skin. Doesn't matter where you come from, how much money you have. When you're in that foxhole, that is your lifeline, is that person next to you. So that's where I feel we need to do that right now in this country. Come together in love and give somebody a smile you know, help somebody out that maybe you wouldn't. And I think that's the silver lining we're seeing right now. People are standing up and I love to watch what people are doing right now. It's, it's, uh, it's joining this whole Treat Now Coalition, you know, in, in every aspect, because suicide's off the charts. Teenagers, seniors, it's epidemic. So that's kind of my soulful rosy moment of the call. That's my inspiration for the day. <laughs> I love that, I love that. And, you know, I think that as Christians, it, it, that is what we're called to do. And we, you know, uh, Christ was love. That's what Christ was all about. I mean, he came here for us out of his love. So then we can share that love with others. Mm -hmm. And because of where we are in our country right now, it's like we can still love people who don't agree with where we are. And the only way we're going to ever make a difference is by loving people arguing and trying to convince them on our side it's one thing we can share information but it it has to be done from a point of love because if it's not we're no different than the other side we're no different than the ones that are you know browbeating and so if we can reflect the love of christ through the things we do and treat people with respect and kindness then we can make a difference just individually what you're doing every day you're doing that out of love you're making a difference and like i said it doesn't matter what their skin color is, whatever, or how, what language you speak, or whether you can half understand them or not, or all of those things that we let get in the way of just purely loving people for the people they are, because Jesus loves them all. He loves all of us. Absolutely. And that's what our job is, Absolutely. I think. So I think you know, what you're saying is, is exactly right. If we could, in our own small sphere of influence, we each have one. So each one of you has a sphere of influence and it might be small, it might be large, but you don't know that the people you're touching right now, they may go on to touch greater amount, bigger people. They may be, you know, they may yeah. be out there and you're helping show them what it means to, to love people at this time. That, that's uh, I think that's the only force strong enough, you know, the love of Christ through us to other people. You know, um, somebody great said, be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah. Be the change. Uh, don't talk about it. Put your feet and step one foot in front of the other and make sure love is at the center of your decisions. Like what would love do now? Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's, well, of course, we're at the top of the hour and a little over. Um, so oh. Janet, I want you back sometime. Are you willing to come back and join us again? I would love to. I would love to. We can get into the Triple Crown a little bit more and maybe take some calls or, or take some questions would be great. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, I would much, love Tanya. it. You're I would welcome. love it if they would do that. Um, you know beautiful. what I'm thinking so is, um, and we yeah. can find the correct day, but uh, we now are we're starting our new Wow Wednesdays. And the first Wednesday of every month, um, I'll be hosting mm -hmm. a um, 
uh, a topic or a person or a guest on that first Wednesday on Zoom where we can have more interaction. And so um, would you be willing to do one of those? We could we put one of those out. And you and I will talk about oh, absolutely. schedule. But, um, this, this week, just a little absolutely. FYI, this week we have our wow, first Wow Wednesday. And we're doing a posting party on LinkedIn. So any of you, first of all, you, you do have to join Fun Fearless because the the uh, posting party is set for our Fun Fearless group. So if you're not in there, just go join Fun Fearless. And, you know, it's pretty easy. Go to the group. Uh, and it's fun. I probably should. I'll post the link. Uh, Terry Ann, if you're still on, if you could post the link for our Fun Fearless, that would be great. Um, and you just, you know, you just ask to join. And uh, I'm everybody that I see on here, I know you personally. So obviously, you, you're coming in. I think most of you already are. Um, but anyway, that's this Wednesday, 11 o'clock um, Pacific time and one o'clock central time. Um, but I'll check back with you, Janet, and we'll have you on maybe right after the first of the year for one of those wild Wednesdays. That would be fun. So that would be awesome. Well, That'd be awesome. Thank you. God bless I do you want to mention the work you're doing. Um, you inspire us to, to do more and to look at where, and you know, there's so many ways, everybody, there's so many ways that each of us can make a difference. So really pray about it. Leave your heart open to see where God's directing you because he is working. He's working in lots of areas and yours might not be the veterans and yours, you know, and I'm certainly not a doctor of anything, you know, so, but we each have where God's calling us to work because we each have a purpose. And I always go back to, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11, where he, you know, he knows the plans he has for us for hope and a purpose. And you each one individually, God's calling you for a purpose. So, Go into your heart, as Jesus says, go deep and go inside and find what it is that God's calling you to, and then take your first step. It takes, it's just a series of steps to get you from point A to point B, and, and you can do that. So we both encourage you for that. Thank you, Janet. You're awesome. Thank and you. Uh, thank, thank you, everybody, you. for being thank here. You. Yes. You know that, uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up. I see so many names over there. Thank you so much. And remember, the greatest of all is love. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Thank everybody. You. Love you. Take care. And remember that life is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. So go out there, choose wisely, and choose to make a difference in the world. Bye now. Bye-bye.